must have been 14, maybe 15 years old. As I left school, as always, and don't ask me why, I was making sure my tie was, my tie was straight, and I had no stains in my school uniform. But the next thing I remember hearing is, Granddad is in the hospital. He had a heart attack. I'll never forget, it was a Tuesday. And on every Tuesday, I used to go running with my grandfather. And this is my grandfather that survived war. He's been in military deployments and he survived extremism. But at that moment, my grandfather was being killed by his own heart. I went running straight away to the hospital and as, as I entered the hospital, I saw him sitting pale, sick and worried in a hospital bed. Next to him, there was a pile of papers and these papers had a drawing of a heart and notes from his surgeon. The surgeon told me, I'm going to patch your grandfather's heart tomorrow morning. But he said to patch it up, not mend it. And I really wondered what was going to happen to my grandfather. And actually, at that moment, I never really paid much attention to hearts, any hearts, even my own. Let me ask you a question. How many of you have been checking your heart lately? Raise your hands if you have checked your heart. Well... This is reflective that we really don't pay much attention to our hearts. In fact, we're very evil to our hearts. 95% of all vascular disease is preventable. A few changes in our diet, our lifestyle, increased heart, and increased exercise would really make us better. In fact, we are so cruel de vil that 60% of us in this room will die for cardiovascular disease or its ramifications. So, I thought as a young graduate in 2007 that I was going to do something about it. And early 2008, I really despaired and I was looking out of the window at University College London Labs and I saw the building in front, it was full of cement and building works, and I saw they were building the London Centre for Nanotechnology. So I looked at it and I thought, my stem cells are really not going to fix this problem, so I'd need to do something about it. Why not use nanotechnology to sort this problem? And I really thought I was sleep deprived, going insane, because I was totally ignorant. I just actually learned the word nanotechnology. I had no idea what that was. So the next thing I know, a few months later, a few too many emails, I set up a system by which I would research in four distant areas, totally different areas of research involving at least six different universities in three different countries, and I tell you, held to conference calls and direct flights. I wanted to create a system to deliver drugs in stem cells and get these to go into your broken heart and really help it to be mended. The system would consist of something brand new, a totally novel nanoparticle or nano thing, as used to call it, and we would be able to deliver, deliver drugs with it, so these cells which we were putting in very hostile situations would actually solve. At the time, the major problems were, one, you couldn't really get stem cells to survive in an infarcted myocardium because it was a really hostile area, it was a bit like putting these stem cells into a war zone. And number two, we really didn't have a system that could deliver drugs and be trackable over time. So I thought, let's do this. And in fact, we created a system by which it was all biocompatible and ideal for human usage. Obviously, that was so 2030, right? Often simple ideas involve very complex experimentation. We went all the way from developing physical instruments to um, uh, surgical apparatus. I used my initiative and I was definitely not afraid. Can we do it? Yes, we can. And a few years later, that day had arrived. The day which the data show we could do it, I really remember it. I was in North Finland, Finland. I spent the whole winter in there and I had not seen any natural daylight for a long time. In fact, I was really, really looking forward to the good weather in London. Ironic, isn't it? <laughs> so, just before I left and I boarded that flight, I got a call from a supervisor saying, wow, well done, I never thought you would do it, you got so lucky, this is pretty much impossible. 
And just a note on luck. I don't believe in luck. Um, luck is a very, very difficult business. You have to really work hard to get this thing, which is called luck, which is based on hard work. Anyway, so I decided to move on myself with my luck. Like Einstein said, life is like riding a bicycle. You must keep moving to keep your balance. So I wanted to do something bigger and better. I needed a system that was both therapeutic and preventive. There is nothing like that currently, until I went back to drawing board. Actually, not the drawing board, the napkins, because I drink far too much coffee. Don't do that. It's really bad for your heart. And yes, I came up with a new system where I wanted, I actually went ahead, I took my own blood, I isolated this type of cells from my blood, labeled it with a new superpower system, and re-injected it in our bone blood. And what we were doing is that we are keeping vessel integrity by making sure that at early injury, at early injury, all becomes well. The vessels don't get damaged, we don't get rupture, and we don't get broken hearts. So this whole business of mending broken hearts went very extreme because I had to get leaders from all over the world, the scientific world. In fact, I was working under the same lab as Israeli Jews and Palestinian Muslims, and we all working in harmony. I also had to deploy military um, experts, and we really went all the way to be together inside and outside the lab. So outside the lab, I made an effort to join, to join runners without boundaries and humanitarian aid teams. And while in missions, I used to get shouted a lot to the soldiers, and that's where the spitfire comes from, that's what they call me. And the reason was, is because without that helmet and that eye protection, I could go blind. Any simple accident and you go blind. Now I'm going to ask you something, Please close your eyes, but really close it, you have it open. And now imagine how it will be like to go blind. You're probably, it's very unlikely that you will even be able to find your handbags. Your heart must be quite broken, because that's it. You're not going to see it ever again. Good, good thing for the ladies, it's okay if our clothes are not matching. So now imagine how could a soldier cope with blindness? Someone that is not used to being dependable or anyone, someone that always has missions. Now think about the victims in Manchester five days ago, all those civilians, and many of them will have to cope with blindness. So that's the first time I came across Blind Veterans UK, formerly known as St. Dunstan's. It started in 1915 by a gentleman called Sir Arthur Pearson. And that is 102 years ago. And he vowed that he was going to be the blind man, not a blind man. And he was going to make sure that soldiers would live well, work, have fun, play games, reverse the effects of blindness, victory over blindness. And you may ask me, what do hearts have to do with eyes? Well, actually, a lot. Eyes are highly dependent, well, in a good blood vessel integrity, just like the heart. We need new blood vessels. And that's when I thought, I am also going to adapt this new system I created by taking my own blood, my own cells, and put it back to also reverse the effects of blindness, try to restore vision. And like Sir Arthur Pearson, I want this to be the treatment not a treatment. I want us to be able to prevent and treat disease. Our methods are very promising. Preclinical testing is astounding. And let me tell you something else. This whole business of mending broken hearts is so much more than a physiological mendage. Is more, so much more than getting eyes better and your heart better. It's also about bringing people together, sharing information, collaboration, unity. Many of my friends are Orthodox Jews, Orthodox Muslims, and we all really work well together. And this highlights the fact that the future is highly multidisciplinary. And the future, it is right now, and you are the future.
Thank you.